Wonderful Life message for today is titled, Life is Subject to Change, Don't Resist It. Life is Subject to Change, Don't Resist It. Now, this message has also been posted to RevBates.tv. Just go to RevBates.tv and click on the weekly message, and you'll be able to read the text portion of this message, which will give you <clears throat> the, the basics of what this message is all about today. Life is subject to change, don't resist it. You know, there's a saying that life is subject to change without notice, without notice. But we have notice of changes as we start taking into our mind every day that we are part of this, this expansion of the spirit, that God is always seeking to expand ideas through us, as us, and for us. If we just listen and let our mind be clear of all the noise and nonsense of the world and of the past experiences, and let ourselves be open to this newness, this newness that's available to all of us. Let's look at these words from the great Dr. Frank Richelieu. This is from his book, The Art of Being Yourself, The Art of Being Yourself. And you can buy his book on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. <clears throat> and I highly recommend that you do so. He writes, life is progressive. It will not be imprisoned in the past. It is offering you change at all times. Wherever you are and wherever your loved ones are, change is taking place all the time. Sometimes the changes are not necessarily what we want. But when we view them from a large enough perspective, we can see that they are for the better. Get the marvelous feeling of newness of starting all over again. You can dig in and do what you always wanted to do, as long as you know that the spirit which is within you is the divine spirit and it cannot be broken and it cannot be hurt. Determine to let this spirit come forth with great joy. Determine to let this spirit come forth with great joy. Now, what does Dr. Frank mean by determine to let the spirit come forth with great joy? It means let the new ideas come to your awareness. Let God reveal them to you, but you can't find the new idea if your mind is focused on the old ideas, if your mind is focused on the things that you don't want, you can't receive that new idea so that we can receive that which we do want. So we must clear our mind of all the things of the past. Say, today is a new day. I let my mind be renewed and refreshed into this new day. I let myself begin to visualize within my own mind to see the image and likeness of myself being successful, being healthy, being happy, being all those things, doing all those things that I choose to do, having those things that I choose to have, and realize that there's enough and more for everyone, so whatever it is that I accept for myself takes nothing away from anyone else. As a matter of fact, most of those things that we accept for ourselves create a greater prosperity for all those people around us. You know, it is true that life is progressive, and since we are part of life, we are part of life. God is life, God is truth, God is spirit. It's just as the great mystics tell us, and just as Jesus tells us, the Father is spirit, we must be progressive too. When we attempt to stop and stick around in our comfort zone, we find sooner than later that our mind resists our unwillingness to progress. We find ourselves frustrated, depressed, confused, and even angry and not realize why we feel this way. These negative emotions are caused by an inner resistance to change, an inner resistance to change. And for many people, this inner resistance is experienced because of fear that the changes may not result in something good or better than we already have. And this fear is created by our perceptions of the appearances of things. Many people remain steadfast and immovable in miserable conditions because of the fear of change. And some people speak to that fear of change within us and, and attempt to convince us to do things that are not for our good, not for our good at all. Pope John Paul II counseled women to stay in their marriages even when there is abuse because he said Christ suffered for them. Pastor Rick Warren teaches something of a similar nature when he tells women to stay in their marriages even when there is abuse because the Bible doesn't give them an out of the marriage. Both Pope John Paul II and Warren speak to that fear of change that is within the mind of so many people and so their teachings are acceptable to their followers. 
and people stay in marriages, both men and women, stay in marriages that are abusive, stay in relationships that are abusive, stay in jobs that are abusive, because they're so comfortable with where they're at, because the fear of something else, the fear, that unser fear of that uncertainty, that something, something may be even worse, creeps into their mind, and so they allow themselves to be okay with the abuse. I wonder what both Pope John Paul II and Pastor Warren would think of wives having their husbands arrested for the abuse, or having wives arrested for the abuse of their husbands. Would at least that be acceptable to them? You know, it's not too late to, it's too late to ask Pope John Paul II, because he's gone on to the hereafter, but perhaps someone in Rick Warren's church could ask him, are women at least allowed, or men at least allowed, to call the police when there's abuse in the relationship? <clears throat> this is the kind of nonsense and noise that we get from the world that has nothing to do with the freedom of the spirit within us. The, the first law of spirit is liberty, freedom. The freedom to realize peace and happiness and joy. The freedom to realize harmony. And all the things of the spirit within us, to feel good about life, to have interest in life, to be enthusiastic about life, not to go through life dealing with issues and circumstances and people and things that cause us to feel that life is negative. Life is a gift. It's a gift. It's not a, it's not a gift of abuse. It's not a gift of struggle. It's not a gift of limitation or lack. God has gifted us with this life, and as we read in the Lord's Prayer, which is the key to life, Jesus tells us, you give us this day our daily bread. You give us, us, you and me, everyone, that our Father, our Father gives us each day our daily bread. That means gives to us the things that will bring a greater joy, a greater happiness, and a greater peace into our lives. The Spirit of God wants to enjoy life through us. That's why that living spirit within us is always drawn to those things, always finds an appeal in those things that bring us a greater joy, a greater happiness, a greater peace, a greater awareness of the beauty in the world and the beauty in the people around us and the beauty within our own soul. Throughout history, man-made religion has given the world so much that defies the life, the love, and the intelligence of God and as we free our mind from religious dogma, we shall find an inner strength and confidence that can only be the spirit within us. Limitation contradicts the flow of the spirit through our mind, our heart, and our soul. We don't need to be saved from anything except perhaps a great deal that we have learned from the world, especially from religion and politics. Our mind must be free as the nature of our spirit is ruled by the law of life once again, that law is liberty, the freedom to experience this thing called life in our own unique way. When our freedom is imposed upon by the limitations of the world, we find struggle and frustration in our mind and even in our heart. That's why so many people suffer from heart disease. They lose that love of life. We must love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And to love God means to love life, to love life. That's what Jesus was telling us. Love this thing called life because life is God. So many of the diseases that exist in the world today are caused by the suppression of the freedom of the spirit within us. Our health, our prosperity, our success are all diminished when we no longer feel the great joy of being free and alive to life, awake to new experiences and new realizations of the power within us to progress spiritually in our lives. Now, the master of positive thinking, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, stated, <clears throat> any fact facing, you, facing us is not as important as our attitude toward it. Any fact facing us is not as important as our attitude toward it, for that determines our success or our failure. The way you think about a fact may defeat you before you ever do anything about it. You are overcome by the fact because you think you are. Formulate and stamp indelibly on your mind a mental picture of yourself as succeeding and hold this picture tenaciously. Never permit it to fade. Your mind will seek to develop the picture 
Do not build up obstacles in your imagination. Do not build up obstacles in your imagination. Don't let yourself get caught up in the world thinking that somehow we can step outside of the kingdom of God. I mean, we read in the scripture, in him we live and move and have our being, and this him is spirit. Just as Jesus says, the Father is spirit, and we must worship him, give our attention to him, love him, trust in him, depend on him, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. So hold this picture tenaciously in your mind after you formulate and stamp indelibly on your mind a mental picture of yourself as succeeding, as your health is, is progressing towards an excellent health, as your finances are opening up to having money to spare and to share, as your loving companionship becomes something that you enjoy and enjoy the work that you do, the people around you, the the things that are happening to you and start taking a greater interest in your life today and every day, knowing that there's always something new to be found, always something new that comes to your awareness when your mind is open to the newness, when your mind is open to the spirit being present in your life. And do not build up obstacles in your imagination, Dr. No Dr. Norman Vincent Peale tells us. So many times people do. They start seeing things that, that of a negative nature before those things are even, even presented to them. That fear, that false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, fear. False evidence appearing real. Don't judge by appearance, as Jesus said, and every great mystic has repeated those words. Do not judge by what you see, by what you hear, by what you can taste and touch, but judge by right judgment, judge by the judgment that God is all in all, that God is everywhere, that God is everything, that in him we live and move and have our being, and in us the spirit is seeking to express something more wonderful, more greater, more beautiful than we've ever experienced before. Now, Dr. Peel gives us a way in which we can take our mind away from problems and negative issues so that we can use the power of our mind to connect with the intelligence that will bring solutions to our awareness, that intelligent nature of God. We cannot simply ignore negative thoughts. We must displace them with a better idea and image and gain an understanding of why this better idea and image will cause a greater good to be revealed to us. Rather than build up obstructions, we should remind ourselves of this great insight into truth from the great Thomas Troward. Now, Thomas Troward was gave us a, a statement that the Bible is the most important book we will ever study. Why? Because he says if you take out all the cultural things of the Bible and you study it, you will find spiritual principles that Job and Isaiah and Moses and Jesus and Jeremiah that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all these people realize were universal principles that apply to all of us. Thomas Torres held us to say to ourselves, my mind is the center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means a production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new, not included in past experiences, though proceeding out of it by orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world in which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions, always in advance of any that have gone before. Always in advance of any that have gone before. And for those of you who, who remember or know the prayer of Jabez, which is in the Holy Scripture, you will realize that that prayer is all, all about expansion, all about expanding our consciousness so that we can take in more, take in more of all the good that God has prepared for us, and we can find more and more validation of the creative process in the individual from current teachers of spiritual principles, too, that are telling us to open our mind, to take our mind off the problems, take our mind off the negatives, take our mind off anything that diminishes us, that causes us to have any feeling of frustration or anxiety or fear of the future and start realizing that in 
in each and every one of us there is a living spirit that's part of that power, that intelligence, and that spirit that is God. And it's always seeking to create more good, more and more good, but we must accept it. We must take it into our mind as, as, as ourselves personally experiencing that good. Experience the good that we want in our mind first, and then we can see that good our picture in our experiences, just as we read in the Holy Scriptures, as within, so without. And Jesus tells us the kingdom of heaven is within you, not low here or low there, but what does that kingdom of heaven look like? What does it feel like when you think about it? How, what is the image of it? What is the image of yourself living in that kingdom of heaven that's within you, within your own mind, within your own thought, within your own images and likenesses that you take into your mind and contemplate? Do we see ourselves as healthy and happy? Do we see ourselves enjoying life? Do we see ourselves feeling alive to life, awake to the world in which we live? Do we see ourselves feeling that life is good? Or do we see ourselves dreading, dreading to open the mail because there's a bill in it that we cannot pay or dreading that doctor's diagnosis because we may have an illness that we don't want to deal with or dreading the thought that <clears throat> maybe by looking at our age we're closer to our death than we're closer than we are to our birth and start concerning ourselves about that. All these things that we take into our mind that diminish that spirit that wants to enjoy life through us does diminish life for us. So see yourself feeling alive and awake and, aware and, and, and interested in life and well and happy. See yourself feeling the goodness of life as it moves through your mind, your heart, and your soul and take it into your mind that God is. God is. If God is, good is. And if we're not experiencing the good, if we're not realizing the greater good, then we must get our ego out of the way and stop resisting the changes that are happening all the time. Let's go back to those great words from the great Dr. Frank Richelieu from his book, The Art of Being Yourself. He says, life is progressive. It will not be imprisoned in the past. It is offering you change at all times. Wherever you are and wherever your loved ones are, change is taking place all the time. Sometimes the changes are not necessarily what we want, but when we view them from a large enough perspective, we can see that they are for the better. So get the marvelous feeling of newness. Get it in your mind. Get that marvelous feeling of newness of starting all over again. You can dig in and do what you always wanted to do as long as you know that the spirit, the spirit that, that, that is God, which is within you, is the divine spirit, and it cannot be broken and it cannot be hurt, determined to let this spirit come forth with great joy in your mind. Let it come forth with great ideas, let it come forth with a greater feeling of being alive, of being healthy and being happy, a greater feeling of, of realizing that your prosperity is increasing, that everything good that you can imagine for yourself is becoming available to you and start seeing yourself in your mind's eye. See how that looks to you. See how that looks to you. And let's go back to those words of the great Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. He says, any fact facing us is not as important as our attitude toward it, for that determines our success or failure. Now, what is our attitude? It's the spirit in which we do something. It's the spirit in which we realize something. It's the spirit in which we live our lives. Some people have a bad attitude, that means they have a bad outlook on life. If they have a good attitude, that means that that spirit within them is seeking to be expressed in a greater way, and they're letting it move through them in that greater way and reveal to them what it is that they want to experience. The way you think about a fact may defeat you, Dr. Peel says, before you ever do anything about it. You are overcome by the fact because you think you are, because you think you are. Formulate and stamp indelibly on your mind a mental picture of yourself as succeeding. See yourself. Look up. Just as Jesus said, look up and not down. Don't look down at the physical things. Look up and see with your mind's eye. See yourself successful, dressed successfully. See yourself driving a, a nice car or see yourself... <clears throat> 
getting out of a limo with a driver opening the door for you, whatever it is that, that awakens your mind to a greater good, go over the top with it. Just as Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say that to that mountain, be moved into the sea, and it will be. He was telling us to go over the top. He didn't tell us to try to move mountains into the sea, but he was telling us to go over the top in our mind to awaken that spirit within us, to stir up that spirit within us so we can let our mind be open to the newer idea, the better idea, the greater idea, and let it be true for us. Let's look at these words from, from the Abraham Hicks Law of Attraction Journal. Law of Attraction, the Law of Attraction is just sowing and reaping, sowing the seeds of faith and, and hope into our mind, sowing the seeds of things into our mind, through the images in our mind of what we want. So this is from their Law of Attraction Journal, and we know that we can find the truth in all manner of places. So let's look at these words. It is natural that by knowing what you do not want, you are able to clarify what you do want. And there is nothing wrong with identifying a problem before beginning to look for a solution. But many people, over time, become problem-oriented rather than solution-oriented, and in their examination and ex explanation of the problem, they continue the perpetuation of the problem. That which is like unto itself is drawn, so tell the story you want to live, and you will eventually live it. In other words, quit talking about your problems. Let the problems go away. Don't, don't resist them, but don't give them any power. Problem-oriented people create their own subtle resistance to change, and everything is changing towards an expansion of good for each and every one of us if we let it. But we must condition our mind to accept this as the truth for us. We must condition our mind. That's why we pray. That's why we do affirmations. That's why we meditate. That's why we do spiritual treatment. We condition our mind to accept those things that we find appealing, that we're interested in, that give us a greater joy as truth for us. And as we do, we shall see it in our life. Just as Jesus tells us, it's done unto you as you believe. As you believe in the good, you receive the good. As you believe that life is hard, then you receive a harder life, a struggling life, an anxious life, a, a life filled with idea, anxiety and frustration. So begin to believe, just as Jesus tells us, believe that God is, that God is for you, that God is supplying you with everything necessary for you to enjoy this thing called life today. For God does give us this day our daily bread, and that bread symbolizes the wonderful life, the abundant life, the joyful life and the fulfillment of all the good desires of our heart today and every day. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with